to hear you again. And eh, Nicolás, si, si querés, eh, puedes eh, empezar con, con alguna pregunta, ¿sí? Para el doctor. We can start with Nicolás, if you are okay. Hola, buenas tardes. Eh, buenos días desde acá, desde Chile. Acá son las 11.30 de la mañana. Eh, Quería hacerle, no sé si le puedo hacer la pregunta en español al doctor y tú se la puedes traducir o... Sí, vamos a tratar de hacerlo de la mejor posible, sí. We, we can try to eh, make the, the question after in, in English. It's okay, doctor? Okay. Okay. Eh, sí. A ver, no. la pregunta es la siguiente. Eh, ¿A qué cree él que se debe el éxito de la vacunación que se realizó en Israel y que ha sido liderada y que ha sido destacada por el mundo entero como, el, como la mejor que ha habido en todo el mundo. ¿Por qué, ¿Cuál fue el éxito y qué él recomendaría para otros países en tema de la vacunación masiva de la población? Ok, doctor eh, Nicolás quiere to, to know what's es el clue of the success of the vaccination in, in Israel and what would you suggest to the rest to the to the world to do uh, in order to to try to control the pandemic also doctor doctor also as I, in the in the chat I, I have the question in English no? ah, okay thank you Luis. Okay. okay thank you thank you very much for the question I think really that uh, there are two things in parallel. First, our infrastructure is very good. I think that we have one really of the best health systems in the world, which works all the time, all over the years. Every one in one, you know, we have a law of uh, the rights of uh, health for everybody, uh, like 30 years ago. And since then, everyone must be insured in a HMO. And there is a connection between uh, all the HMOs and the government, the Ministry of Health. So the moment that uh, the Ministry of Health decided that uh, we start to vaccinate it, then we could easily uh, make hundreds of places to get people uh, to come and uh, get a vaccine. We got all the refrigerators all the, the uh, men and women power, you know, you must have a lot of nurses for give a vaccine for uh, 3 million people in one month. So we uh, did mobilization, like we took the men and the women power, the nurses from one job to another job. And we said, now it's like a war. Now we do nothing but vaccinate, vaccinate, vaccinate. And uh, I think that this infrastructure really enabled us to uh, give a lot of vaccines in the same time. On the other side, if people would, will, uh, would not come, then we have all the infrastructure, but we don't have whom to vaccinate. So we started to do the work with the people, you know, with the population about the safety of the, of the vaccine, about the uh, <clears throat> immunogenicity about the success of the vaccine before the vaccine even started. So everybody was already anxious, when will it come? When will this uh, thing which is going to save us, when it will come? So, you know, on the first time in December, when the prime minister got the vaccine, you must uh, saw those pictures on the first day after that, it was on a Saturday that the prime minister got the vaccine and the day tomorrow, like uh, on Sunday, all the lines were very, very, very long. And you know, people were waiting really to get a vaccine. Uh, it's not like in many other countries, I know that uh, people, you know, they don't trust the vaccine. They're afraid of the vaccine. So uh, even if you want to give it, people are not coming to get it. Uh, so here, there were lines of people to come and get a vaccine. And uh, the HMOs together with the Ministry of Health open hundreds and hundreds of places that people can uh, come and get it. And I think that, you know, the more you vaccinate in the beginning, so the more trust 
the vaccine gets from the public because it sees the effectiveness, it sees that it's safe, that no one dies from it. So more and more people want to come and get it. So it's really like, you know, a circle. The more you vaccinate, the more uh, it's trustable by the people which want to come and get it. Thank you. Eh, me, me, me envían una pregunta desde el diario Las Últimas Noticias de, uh -huh. de, de Chile y que la pregunta es la siguiente. Dice, ¿qué opinión tiene el doctor? O ¿Qué cree él de por qué, siendo que en Chile también ha sido un proceso de vacunación exitosa, por qué han aumentado tanto los casos en paralelo? Es decir, una vacunación muy exitosa con casi el... 40% de la población chilena vacunada y sin embargo los casos de contagiados por coronavirus se han multiplicado y estamos en el peor momento de contagios. ¿A qué se puede deber esa relación? Luis, traducís vos o... Le estoy escribiendo. Eh, eh... No. Why, why? They, they want to know why in Chile, even though they have 40% of their population already uh, with the vaccine has the worst situation since the pandemic uh, began. Yes. Do you well, have any idea? Yes, good, good results in vaccination rates, but in, in Israel, good results, and in Chile, bad results in, 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 in contamination. What do you think is the reason why? Okay, you, you know, when I see that the vaccine is not effective, uh, there may be two reasons. First, that the, there is a new variant, which is resistance to the vaccine. You know, we are going and giving a vaccine, which is effective against the S protein. It's a very important structure of the virus, uh, which is the receptor binding protein. And if there is a very uh, big mutation rate, you know, with a completely new variant, Maybe the vaccine is not that good, but according to what I know, in Chile, it's not the situation. Uh, in Chile, it's the uh, local variant and the British variant, which is very sensitive to the vaccine. So it's not this. So the other reason maybe is people, you know, they just got, started to get the vaccine and they didn't wait until enough people will get the vaccine and they already locked the lockdown, uh, uh, break the lockdown, like people felt safe only because, you know, like 20, 30 percent people uh, get the vaccine and they started to act uh, more liberal in their life. So this is another reason. I really don't know the specific situation in Chile, but uh, mainly those are the two reasons all over the world when you try to understand why a vaccine is not working. Okay. Eh, Penélope, from Argentina. ¿Se entiende, Nicolás? Ah, perdón. Nicolás, ¿lo estás viendo en el chat? ¿Perdón? ¿Estás viendo en el chat las sí. respuestas? Sí. Perfecto. Y de, sí. Okay. Después de la colega argentina, quería solamente hacer una pregunta más que me enviaron desde el canal Megavisión de Chile. Pero sigamos con el orden y después, cuando ustedes me den la palabra, yo hago la consulta. Perfecto, perfecto. Gracias, Nicolás. ¿eh? Well, uh, Penelope from Argentina, from Clarín, is going to make a question. Penelope? Okay. Uh, hello. Uh, it's nice to meet you, Dr. Levy. Uh, sorry for having the camera turn off because it is not working very well. Well, by the way, uh, I want to know what can be applied from the Israel model to the Argentine model. Look, I, I really, I'm not familiar with the Argentine model. Uh, and uh, when the doctor talked, she talked in Spanish before. So I couldn't understand what she said about the Argentine model. But I can tell you that in every place where the infrastructure is, they really invest in it, you see success. Uh, you saw it, of course, in Israel. It was the first place where we uh, succeeded to vaccinate a lot to free people because a good infrastructure, then you saw it in the United States. You saw it in New York when they, they decided, you know, in New York, one problem is that, uh, and not like in Israel, not everyone has, you know, a unique number. 
ID number. The system works differently. So they didn't know even how to call people, how to know if people were vaccinated or not. They didn't have a follow-up. But then because of this epidemic, they uh, build a new old infrastructure with, uh, which enabled them to get a lot of people to be vaccinated uh, very uh, fast and keep records of it. And uh, the same thing in England, where I think uh, now they are second after us in uh, succeeding, uh, giving a lot of uh, vaccinations. So really it's uh, the, uh, the politicians and the people who invest uh, money in this thing, they must decide that they want to do it and to do it uh, right and to invest in infrastructure. In Germany on the other side, where they didn't uh, invest in this infrastructure, I know from colleagues in Germany that hardly they can succeed in uh, vaccinating, uh, vaccinating people. A lot of people which are 60 years old uh, didn't get the vaccine yet. And I think if there is one thing is really that the infrastructure of our healthcare uh, organizations work so good. And I think that uh, the world should learn from it, not only about vaccination, but uh, a lot of places they uh, should learn uh, about it also uh, in general health. Okay, and yes, and can I ask something? Other something? Other yeah. thing? Yes. Sorry. Uh, and in your conference, you said that there are some questions without answer. In what state of the research are? For example, ha, uh, what I happened with the... You. Can you repeat? I did not hear the last sentence. Yes. You said in your conference that there are some questions without answer. For example, uh, what happened with the mutaciones? Yeah. I don't know Mutation. what... It, thank you. Uh, in what state of the research they are? Okay. And uh, uh, we have uh, done research here with the, uh, what we call the British uh, variant because the, this uh, became to be the most abundant uh, variant here in Israel. And we know that it's very, very effective against it. And uh, I know that uh, my colleague in the NIH in Washington, they did their research about the South African variant and uh, it was very, very effective also against it. So really, I don't think to the mutations that now we see in the world, there is uh, evidence that it's not working. Uh, I don't know, I don't have any uh, good information about the Brazilian variant. Probably you know about it uh, better than me. Uh, but you know, I think that we'll have to follow up all of the time. We'll have to repeat the tests to see how it works every several months to see that a, a new extreme variant uh, that uh, is not, uh, we don't have something effective against it will come. But uh, uh, for the variants that we see now in Israel, in Europe, uh, the vaccine is very, very effective. Perfect. And uh, can I ask the last? Okay, one more and next. Uh, uh, Adam. Okay. It's only a dab. Uh, I don't understood what is the difference between a traditional vaccine and MRA. I remember. The difference? Yeah. Between a traditional vaccine and mRNA. Yeah, okay. In the, you know, in the most traditional vaccine, you take the whole bacteria or virus and whether you make it weak or you kill it all together, and you inject it in the assumption that it will make the immune system to work to make antibodies against it. Then there was a development because they saw that uh, it's not immunogenic enough, which means it's not effective enough to, enough to mount an immune system. So you can do one of uh, two things. First, you can uh, join it to another virus, which is innocent for the human body, but it makes the immune system uh, to make better response. Like for example, if you take 
the corona uh, protein and you put it on another virus, which is not pathogenic for human being, it will make more uh, reactivity of the immune system. But this is also traditional. Or you can take a part only of the virus or of the bacteria and you uh, can uh, uh, give it together with, with what we call adjuvant, which enhances the immune system. And all of those are traditional. It's uh, against the pneumococcus uh, bacteria, which cause the uh, pneumonia. It's against the meningococcus. It's against, you know, a, a lot of uh, things. mRNA virus, actually, you don't give the protein, you don't give the virus, you just give a slow slice of genetic material, but that in the, you designed it to make this protein once it comes into the body. So, you know, it comes into the, you inject it into the muscle, a macrophage, which is one of the immune uh, cells will eat it. It will uh, uh, make it to make the S protein and then the mRNA dissolves and goes away. And uh, the immune system will mount an uh, immune response against, against the S protein. The big advantage is that it, uh, it's uh, very, very effective. You saw that the uh, mRNA vaccines are 95, 98% effective in compared to other vaccines, which are 60 to 80% effectiveness, then it's, they are uh, relatively safe because mRNA is not in the body for a long time. It goes away once it made the S protein. And also you can change very fast if there is a new variant and you have to change it. So you only, you know, you do it on the computer you give order and uh, then uh, the messenger RNA uh, sequence, the new one uh, will make a new, uh, pro the new protein. So I think that the world will go in the future in most of the vaccines to mRNA vaccines. Uh, there was studies now, just very first studies yet, uh, to make a anti-HIV vaccine uh, through this technique. Uh, they tried it in Zika virus, in Ebola virus, and uh, I'm sure that in the coming years, this will be the technique for generating not only vaccines, but also a lot of drugs and a lot of other things. Perfect. Thank you for the clarity and for all. Gracias, Penelope. Vuelvo, vuelvo a Nicolás. Nicolás. Estás muteado, Nicolás. ¿eh? Ahí sí. Tengo las dos últimas preguntas que me la envi una me la envía el periodista Daniel Silva también de Megavisión para el doctor que es la siguiente que es un poco relacionada con la pregunta anterior que yo hice que dice, ¿considera que la campaña de Chile ha sido un fracaso? ¿Qué nos enseña la experiencia de Israel considerando que cuando ellos comenzaron con la vacunación estaban con muchos casos y ahora prácticamente con ninguno. Okay. Uh, what can we learn about the Israeli experience about well the the very important campaign of vacu uh, vaccination? And then, if you consider the the situation in in Chile. Uh, wrong or a, a fail, something like that, because they, they don't have the results that they were waiting uh, right now. What was the first question? What, what the first can question we is... learn? Or what can, what, what does it, the, the experience, the Israeli experience teach us about uh, uh, to the rest? Uh, about the, the, the experience, we're talking about the experience of Israel. What, what can we learn about the, the experience, in, 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 the Israeli experience? Diego, Diego, let me, let me just, I, I write it in the chat. The, the question was more direct. Do you think that Chilean campaign was a failure? This is the question, more direct. Okay. Yes. You know, it was good if I would know the Chile campaign, but I really don't, I, I'm not familiar with the Chilean uh, campaign. Uh, 
Look, we did a lot of campaigns for a, a change of behavior in the people and we did not succeed because we had a lot of uh, people in the population that uh, did not uh, listen to us when we told them to sit at home, uh, don't go to you know, a lot of big funerals, don't uh, go to big weddings. And you know that uh, for the really religious, very religious people going to funerals is very important. And sometimes you saw the picture before, the picture with all the rabbis, it's like 30,000 people going to one funeral, standing one near the other. And uh, within the Arab population, it's very important to go to weddings. And a lot of people went to weddings, you know, also like 20,000 people go together and don't keep distance. And with this, we did not succeed. Where we succeed, we succeeded when we came to the people with a real solution. Like tell them, take the vaccine, and we promise you, if you take the vaccine, you can go to the funeral. If you take the vaccine, you can go to the wedding. If you take the vaccine, you can do this and that. Uh, I think this really helped because a lot of people didn't want to stay outside. They wanted to be one of, you know, of all the others that got vaccinated. And if uh, we ask people uh, on the street, uh, why did you get the vaccine? Uh, most of them said, because we want this green uh, passport. We want to be able to go back to work, to go back to the, you know, to send our children to school, uh, to go to the theater or concert or something. So I think that one of the good thing that uh, we did is to uh, give this green passport. Uh, I think also the fact that all, all the government and all the physicians on the first day, I uh, went and made the vaccine in front of everybody, like in the television. Also, it helped people to understand that if we take responsibility and give for ourselves the vaccine, uh, we really trust it. And uh, you know, one very interesting thing is that uh, uh, very soon we started also to vaccinate the uh, children, like six, 16 uh, to 18 years uh, old. And after they saw that we, I remember in the school of my son, they were afraid to uh, vaccinate the children. But when they saw that I give the vaccine to my child, everybody went uh, to take the vaccine. So, you know, you have to understand the culture, the local culture, and to work with a lot of uh, psychologists, maybe or social, uh, uh, people that understand local culture to know how to do your campaign. I, I don't think that what fits Israel uh, should fit also Chile or other countries. It, it's really a local thing. Mm. Amen. Ahí está. Y, y bueno, te acuerdas, claro, decía lo de la, lo de la cultura, ¿no? Que tenés que conocer bien la cultura. Pregunta. Tengo la última pregunta para no quitarle más tiempo también al, al doctor. Sí. Eh, en el mundo y acá en Chile han dado... Eh, se ha hablado mucho y hay muchas fake news en relación a las vacunas. Como que, por ejemplo, hay algunas vacunas genéticas que pueden quitarte información genética, que pueden hacerte daño y que, y que, y que, y que prácticamente es un chip que te quieren colocar prácticamente para conocer tu, todo tu ADN genético. ¿Qué puede decir el doctor respecto a esto, a estas fake news que circulan en la población y que son malintencionadas, obviamente, de las vacunas con, con, que, usa, que utilizan material genético. I, I think that you asked about the fake news. Mm -hmm. Fake so news know, about, about vaccines. About yeah. genetic and about a, a, a kind of chip that can, can control the people who, yeah. who is inoculated, inoculated by, by those, those yes. so, so I must tell you that, you know, in every war, you know, even in a real war, like between uh, two countries, there is always a uh, fake news and uh, we call it a, a psycholo psychological war. So we take all the tools from psychological war to work against fake news. Uh, there was a, you know, one a physician, MD physician 
which uh, uh, I don't know why, something in his mind, and he was against vaccination, and he was a very important source for fake news. So uh, the ethics uh, uh, of the Israeli Medical Association took his license. And uh, then uh, we have a very uh, strong uh, a physician in the Israeli uh, Medical Health uh, Association, Medical uh, Physician Association, uh, which uh, all his job, all his work is to work against fake, fake news. So if he sees in the Facebook or Twitter or something, a fake news, he will recruit everybody to fight this. So every, every time a fake news comes up, there is a lot of people which will go and show the data. For example, uh, one of the fake news that we had is that the uh, immune uh, may uh, disturb with uh, fertility. It will uh, disturb you to make uh, 12 children in the future. So uh, we recruited a lot of gynecologists that they uh, came to the people and showed them how the vaccine works and that there is no logic in this notion that the vaccine uh, will disturb with fertility. Or, you know, of course, uh, there was those people which came and said that uh, they are being injected uh, with uh, something that the government wants to follow them or whatever. And uh, of course, you know, we could uh, uh, go and show them that uh, the government has nothing to do with it. And uh, all the, you know, once all the doctors are getting it, the vaccine, I think it relaxes people from fake news because they, you know, they see that every physician takes it and uh, I think it relaxes them. But you know, there will always be fake news that we cannot uh, fight them. And uh, we hope that it uh, will be small, a small problem. See, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I don't know how much time do you have, a doctor, or I think five I know, minutes maximum. Five minutes, five minutes maximum. maximum. Uh, Penelope, estamos bien? Um, perhaps can. I want to know other thing. Um, for example, who is the name of the doctor who? Penelope? Yes, are you hear me? Sí, yes. Sorry. Uh, who is the doctor who... Uh, who fight the fake news about fertility. Oh, I don't know what is. Uh, just one, uh, his name is Leo, Leo, Leo Unger. Dr. Leo what? Unger, Leo Unger. Uh, I write it in the chat. You can Thanks. find in the uh, Facebook all his activity. And you know, he fights against fake news about the uh, vaccine, not only this year because of Corona, because of COVID, he's doing it for many years. And it's really, he took it as a mission in life, how to fight people who resist the uh, vaccination. And he has very, very good uh, uh, ideas uh, to help people how to fight uh, fake news. And maybe it uh, may be a very good idea also to interview him. Good. And in Israel, are you still using chess for COVID detection? Excuse me? In Israel, uh, yeah. are you still using chess for COVID uh, detection or, or no? Uh, yes, but we use it, you know, uh, we use it. Uh, uh, much less than before, of course. If we did before more than 100,000 uh, examinations per day, now we are doing about uh, 30,000. We do it for clinical reasons, or if somebody is suspected to being exposed, or if somebody comes from uh, abroad, so before he can uh, 
go out from the airport and uh, it must be in isolation until we have a negative uh, result. So this is the indications now for uh, doing the test. And do you think in, in other moment of the pandemic, uh, in Israel need, will need uh, another quarantine? quarantine? Wow, that's a very, very, very good question. I don't know the answer, you know, as it seems now, uh, if uh, a new very extreme variant will not come, I don't think we have another, uh, we need another quarantine or lockdown. But you know, uh, about a month before the COVID started, one year ago, I said, ah, now I can rest, I can go and retire and have fun at home. And uh, it was the most difficult year in my life in working. So I really cannot predict. <laughs> Dr. Thank, Levy, thank you. Thank you all for the, for the questions. Just one short, very short question. In relation to the possibility of conflict between the, the vaccines, let's assume somebody took the Pfizer vaccine in Israel and he will be next year in Europe and he will be taking the, the Sputnik vaccine or the, the, or the other way around. For us in Latin America, we have the Sputnik, we have the, we don't have the Pfizer. What will happen if we will take the Pfizer next year? Only good things. <laughs> I tell you <laughs> why, because what is important is that the S protein will come into the body. All of the rest are platforms. So it's like you ask me, uh, how you want to come uh, to visit me in uh, Chile or Argentina with a Boeing, with a, a Airbus or whatever, you know, it's a platform. So it doesn't matter how the S uh, protein will come uh, to your body. The final common pathway, I want the S protein to be in the body and make the immune system to make antibodies. So I believe that doing it uh, with the platform of mRNA is uh, better but also if I don't have it and I have another platform, let it be. And if next time there will be a better platform that I can get this protein, it's also okay. So from the immunological point of view and from the infectious disease point of view, I think it's quite okay to get the two different kinds of vaccine.